Good afternoon, traders. This is Christian Farmhurst, Traffic and Trade Group, and this is your end of day recap for uh, what day is today. Today is, I know it's Tuesday, Tuesday, August 8th. Uh, risk disclaimer in front of you. Everything that we're going through is for information purposes only, not giving out any advice or recommendations. Everything that we're going over is for education purposes only. All right, so a lot to go over uh, today. Um, again, these um, these last few days have been a bit action packed for uh, some summer days, um, which are uh, generally a little bit quieter. So um, I will go over all the price action with you guys. I'll also um, tell you what to watch in terms, of, uh, you know, using our model for volume at price, which is the TTG market webs uh, to give you some levels of support resistance so that um, you know you can make decisions. That's how I make decisions based on if something is starting to break out of a um, of a significant area, um, you know, and again, uh, that's all tied to volume at price. So let's get to, um, let me go over the, some price action in the indices first, um, and then I will talk a little bit about um, some of the uh, relative strength areas, which I do in just about every video. So um, here's where we are, S&P finished down. Um, again, not that bad considering where we were this morning. Um, Nice bounce off the lows, also nice bounce off of support. What's the support level that we bounced off of? Well, that's the bottom of value for the month of August. That's 448875. So we held that. Um, did we make any huge advancements that you could kind of hang your hat at, hang your hat on and be really excited? No, I don't think so. Um, we so again, it's kind of like more of like a kick save, but we really didn't um, advance the, the ball down the field um, because we're still below these two moving averages. These two short term moving averages are really good for kind of watching the short term trend and a little bit of momentum two, right? So we're below uh, the, the 20 day and the five day moving average, but this could change in a day, right? Just, you know, we're kind of at crucial areas right now. So, you know, one day of price action could kind of move things around a little bit, right? And that's kind of what we have right now. And since we've been, um, you know, falling and, and this close to these moving averages. So, you know, if you're good at being patient, <laughs> which I know is tough to do in trading sometimes, I would, um, you know, con continue to do that in some areas of the market market that are showing some weakness. Um, but um, for now, I, I think it's good that we um, that we held that we tested and we held support. Um, as you know, I, I look a lot at the um, at the one hour charts too, because they can sometimes give us a little bit of a hint or a clue at what's going on. Um, we did break the value area, which I did not think was a good thing um, this morning. But we got back to basically uh, where we just started the week. So again, there's a lot of indecision right now. We're still getting a lot of earnings reports. Some of these moves are pretty tremendous. Um, you know, of course, we're noticing that if names like miss on some metric, um, you know, a lot of names have just advanced so much this year that the market is not taking kindly to if they can't back up, you know, if they can't ha have a have a perfect like routine, I th I'm thinking of like, um, you know, Olympics, you know, in some of the events. And if you don't have a perfect event, a clean, you know, a clean event, um, then uh, what's going to happen is those judges are going to um, are going to are going to knock you down um, pretty decently. That's how competitive it is. I would think about like those Olympic events, not college events. And that, you know, and if you're fighting for like a gold medal, you, you have to have a perfectly clean uh, routine for some, for some of these stocks that have been like gold medal type stocks, right? Like SMCI is one name. Somebody asked me after hours and I'm not picking on anybody, but they said, Hey, why is the stock down so much? I think the stock's up like 283% year to date. So yeah, I mean, you know, there's the guidance wasn't super strong. Um, you know, I think I think a couple of the metrics beat their guidance, but a couple of them are like, you know, they're they're not they were not super super numbers for a stock that's up 283 percent, right? And now, if you're flat and you have those numbers, then the stock's probably going to go up. But if you're up 283 percent year to date, you have to have an amazing quarter, right, and beat all expectations. Right. So again, that's just how it works, guys. Um, when when a stock goes up that much, the the you're setting the bar higher and higher and higher, right? Um, for it to for it to be able to to um, to clear and go higher. Um, by the way, where's the stock now? You know, it's it's at this version point of control, so it's basically just back to where it was. You know, so I, I you know 
I hate these these folks that are dramatic and they're like, oh my God, it's getting crushed. Okay, it's back to where it was a couple of weeks ago. Zoom out. <laughs> it's still back to here. Right? It's only just back to here. So it's given back the tippy top. All right. Um, could it, you know, go down to 280? That's another area. Um, also, you know, and this is how I, I analyze a lot of our setups, right? We notice where there's support on the one hour chart and then also notice the support down here at 282 on the daily chart. And again, you know, let this name come in a little bit, right? The last time it really came in, it was a good, uh, you know, it made a nice charge. So, you know, be, I think in my, in my opinion, be patient. All right. So I went over the, the, um, the technicals for the S and P the Q's are a little bit weaker here, right? We know that we've got some more, some more issues, some more problems here. Why? Because not only are we below those two short-term moving averages, the five and the 20, but we're below the value area, right? And we've got, we're going to have a test here of the 50 day moving average. If price continues to head in this direction, what was positive here is you've got a nice hammer bar, right? But ultimately 343.63 will need to be overcome. And again, this is not that big of a deal because one day of strong price action could get back above those levels. And here's a really good level to watch, basically right here, right? So we have broken um, the, we broke the value area and we have a little bit of a retest. And again, the level is not, you know, the, the level of course is nice to look at, but am I like saying, oh geez, I got to watch what happens at 371.58? No, not necessarily. I'm watching what happens right in this area, right? Because sometimes price will go in, go in a little bit into the value area and then it will come right back out, right? So I would really be paying attention here. And if, you know, down here, I want less exposure above here. I want some exposure. It's just very easy how to do it. All right. So that's the cues. Uh, again, I would say out of those two indices that we went over, a little bit weaker. IWM. IWM has been, now this is kind of interesting because IWM was actually holding in here pretty decently, right? But this did also today break the five in the 20 day moving average. It was holding on to the 20 day moving average pretty decently the last couple of days, but not, but that finally broke. Now, again, this is still locked inside the value area. So not the end of the story. Um, but I would note um, that it is below value now for the week and it will have to retake 193.82 for me to really get involved in this group. Also, the other thing, which I, this is the only chart I'm going to show you, the weekly chart, but this did get rejected um, at 195.87, which is the top of value for the year, which is the most important. And then finally, I'm going to show you the, the strongest one out of the group. And I lied. Here's the uh, weekly chart for the diamonds. But um, for now, this is showing the most strength. Notice the difference, right? Today, it did go lower, but it's still holding the 20-day moving average. Now, it is still in value um, for the month, and it's be just below the five-day moving average. But if I had to pick one to buy, it would probably be out of all of these, uh, the diamonds. I think that they're showing some nice relative strength here. All right, so that's the quick summary of what we're seeing. Um, also, you know, there's been some some economics that came out like last night. It was the China economics, along with some of the banking news that um, was the latest like negative thing that we heard about. You know, the, the um, Moody's, I think, downgraded some banks. Um, keep in mind, tonight we're going to have some more data this week. And I, I got a really good question. Um, I was on the closing print with with Joel um, from Benzinga um, today, and we were talking about some of the things later in the week, right, such as the CPI report, which they're only expecting a 0 0.2, right? Um, that's the monthly number. That's the most important thing, right? The, the year over year number is just what the last 12 months um, have been uh have been showing, right? Um, but point two is um, the fresh number. So we'll see if that's up or down. We, we noticed, you know, I see by, by me, gas prices have gone up a little bit, but I'm not a um, expert. I don't compile numbers on inflation. So I, I don't know if everything else is going to be up or down. Remember on Friday, jobs report, wages ticked up a little bit. So Again, I wouldn't be surprised if this number comes in higher than expected. Now, will this be a big shock? Well, it might be some shock if it happens, but I think the market is already pricing that in. Remember, when there's deflation, um, the 
you know, growth stocks do particularly well. You know, and this is just general stuff, by the way, right? When there's more inflation, right, those stocks don't do so well. So what's been actually doing pretty well recently? Value stocks have been doing well. And we've been talking about that quite a bit, right? I, I posted a chart, uh, I think two or three weeks ago, talking about how I thought value stocks had bottomed versus growth stocks. I showed an RSI divergent, divergence. That was IWD versus IWF. You could look that up on my Twitter feed. Just bring up IWD and you'll be able to find it. Right? And we've been talking about some of those other concepts too. Now, <clears throat> we're not the only ones who report CPI. In fact, tonight, there's a report out from China. Now, they're, they're expected to report PP, CPI and PPI, um, which is a negative 0.4. So, you know, it'll be interesting to see if this, if they continue to have more deflation and we continue to have, the U.S. continues to have more inflation. All right. I'm going to move on from these concepts because I'm not an expert on um, inflation numbers, but I know some of the general relationships to be mindful of. So let's go back to our spreadsheet, right? Because I like to see what advanced during the day, right? Versus what got sold during the day, right? And if we look at our sectors here, whoa. Sorry about that. If we look at our sectors here, you know, what's what pops out at you on this spreadsheet, right? Energy names. Energy names were bought again. In fact, crude, if we look at the crude chart, I'm going to go over a couple of the energy charts, but crude was down pretty decently today. Look at the move back. Does what looks better to you? Right? Here's the Q's chart, right? Look at the rebound that they had. Sure, they had a rebound from the lows. But what's stronger? What looks stronger to you? Crude? or uh, cues. Um, I would say, I'm gonna give you a vote of the uh, of crude, right? And you can look at energy stocks too. What made a stronger rebound to you? Was it tech? Here's tech, by the way, right? Was this that strong of a move to you? Or was this a stronger move? All right, now this still has to get through resistance, but I would say that this was, you know, buyers are showing up into, you know, areas like this, all right? Just a very simple example where you can kind of separate, you know, why do I go through these examples, right? Because it helps you separate emotion, right? When you're looking at levels and, and you know where to be short versus something or versus long or not, or not participate in something that's showing, that is not showing strength. So I don't think that the cues in that group for now is, uh, is showing strength. And I think it's, uh, in fact, showing relative weakness. So um, I think this is interesting, right? And I did buy some this morning um, of XLE. I was already long coming into today. So this is something that I added to, right? It helps me think about what, um, you know, what areas of the market that, that I want to add to. Look at what's going on here, right? This is not gas. This is something I've kind of said to have an eye on here because it's basing. It's been going sideways. The price action is really, really tight. All right, so this is starting to break the value area. This thing could whip um, if it really, if natural grass wants to get going, right? They don't call it the widow maker for nothing. Now there's a whole other reason why they call it that. But bottom line for my purposes is, is, I, is I know it, it can move very fast, right? So do you, now another thing to think about is positioning. Do you think that there's a ton of longs that are in natural gas stocks right now? Probably there's still a lot of people in, in AI stocks, right? And in that theme. So I think there's been more of an, more inflows going into energy recently, but I think that it's not as um, over-owned as much as still tech and um, the, those, um, those growth stocks are. Again, just my opinion. So I started to look at um, XLE, right? You're going to see this in a lot of energy stocks today, right? A lower and kind of a move back above the short-term moving averages. So to me, it looks a bit stronger right now. Here's also, this is the FCG ETF. This is the Nat Gas. Um, this is this is made up of stocks, right? It's not, uh, has nothing to do with, uh, well, sorry, not it, it is not, the commodity is not the backing. So FCG, and we'll bring up the holdings of this so that you could see what companies are in there. But you've got Hess Midstream in there. You've got Conoco. You've got PXD. You've got OVB. Um, you've got um, EOG, APA, Hess Oxy, Fang, uh, Devon Energy. Um, I would think 
range resources will be in there someplace too, but it's, cl it's close. It's close to a couple of the other ones. Like here's the XOP ETF, which is going to look a lot similar. So you don't have to be that particular in a couple of these ETFs, but I would go through the top holdings and make sure that you're comfortable with, with them. But um, that's what's showing strength. Um, also, you know, you've heard me talk a lot about the home builders because it's just amazing to me how well that they've held up here. Now they have not broken to the new highs, but if you start to go through these one by one, as I did in yesterday's video, um, you know, again, to me, they're showing a lot of relative strength for now, right? And we'll have to see what happens, right? This could get up here and it could get rejected. Um, one of them is not getting rejected, right? Pulte Homes made a new high today, right? PHM, very strong. The trend continues here. BLDR reported earnings a couple of days ago, had that funky looking candle, but it's still working pretty well. Right. And then there's a number of other companies in there. Now, the next thing I would say is, OK, you know, if these companies are building right because there's not a lot of supply and people don't want to move out of their homes because they already have low rates. And if there's building going on, well, think about what companies are going to do well building. Right. Caterpillar had a really nice day today. Notice that Caterpillar is also above value area. It's above um, all short-term moving averages. Also note the double bottom that you have on the one hour chart, right at where volume at price is telling us that there's some support, right? Right at 276.50. Notice what this thing did today. It's actually above yesterday's highs. I think that's particularly strong, right? And that's one of the names on our watch list. Um, secondarily, I also like Deer, but I like the I like Caterpillar a little bit better. Um, this is still locked inside the value area, but um, so again, it's just digesting, which is not bad in this. Um, you know, considering that the, you know there's been volatility present recently, but Dare uh, Dare Deer is trying to push um, above these moving averages, so I, I, I like this stock as well. All right, and then you can go through some metals and mining, right? FCX, right? We saw some call buying in this name. Pretty good. I, I still, um, I'm not an expert on the relationship between copper and and um, some of the copper related names, but um, you know, FCX and, and SCCO seem to do pretty well, even when copper goes down sometimes, right? And SCCO still looks better than Freeport, but FCX is seeing the call activity. Um, a lot of call activity on the tape. Watch to see if it can get above or stay above that 42, 47 and start to get above these short-term moving averages. I also like um, one of my favorite names kind of in this steel aluminum area Area, metals area is Reliance Steel and Aluminum, right? That name is trying to push above the short-term moving averages. So there's a lot of interesting setups here, right? And we can go outside of these, um, you know, out of these value type groups, um, but mainly that's where I'm seeing the strength and, you know, that's where the performance is telling you too. Cryptos, right? There's a couple interesting setups here. Um, Coinbase is trying to turn the corner. This is, this is not bad. I would rather be looking at this company um, coming in here, I'm just waiting for the turn. I always like to see the turn begin to start first, right? Uber's another one. Now, I know Lyft is out and gave back their gains, but I would be watching Uber here. And where would I be watching? Well, first of all, there's some support at 43.64. Second of all, um, for the for you know really to kind of watch the turn is to see a move above 40. 516. Notice it traded above there um, after hours, but has given it back. So it may not be ready yet. So again, have to be patient for some of these things. All right, guys, that is it for today's um, end of day video. If you want to see more of my analysis, um, I go through charts, chart after chart after chart um, during reg regular hours in the Tribeca Trade Group. Um, trading room. Uh, we have a charts channel where I put my commentary and I put my thoughts on what I'm looking for. I also have um, a spreadsheet that I have real-time links. So I put triggers, like I put the trigger for Uber is one name I'm watching right at 45.16. So you can kind of, kind of follow along. Um, we also have a community of traders that you could bounce ideas off of too. So this way you're not trading alone and have some um, can spin some ideas off of everybody, including myself. Um, you can go to TribecaTradeGroup.com and um, our coupon code for new members um, so that you can get half off your first month is TTG2023. All right, guys, have a great night. See you tomorrow.